to them than at first meets the eye. When you pull down a noise texture, if I pull down a standard noise texture here into my timeline, and I'm just going to delete the event above it, and here we go, we've got a noise texture. It kind of looks a bit boring. And you sort of think, well, what's that all about? And you can use it, say, as a compositing event over something, so I could, say, take it to some particular compositing mode, uh, take it to add or whatever, and you can get some quite interesting looks, but not a lot's going on. However, they are very animatable, and they can be changed and transformed, and you can do an awful lot with them, which can make them a lot more powerful than at first they may seem. So we're going to take that back to Source Alpha, and we'll just have a very brief look at all these different options that we have. Firstly, the noise type. You have a whole bunch of different types of noise. For example, you've got ones that are called rings. Now, the depth of the rings is controlled by the number of layers. At the moment, that's at one, but if I start to go up, it's basically, other applications might refer to it as complexity. It becomes more and more complex as fractal noise is layered on top. So it's layered. It's uh, basically the number of layers. The more layers there are, the more complex it is, the longer it takes to render. Okay, So do bear in mind that when you start to bump up these layers, you can go all the way up to five. That looks fantastic. You can animate it. You can do incredible things. But it will take a lot longer to actually animate because it has to animate all of the five layers to be able to create the look that you might be looking for. Okay, so I'm going to stick up one just for the ease of demonstration. And, of course, you can swap the colors. You can make them whatever colors you like. You can play with colors. I don't need to go through all of these with you. But, you know, if you want to make it red and whatever, you, you can play with all of those. So I don't need to show you these ones. However, I want to go through all the other bits and pieces. So I'm just going to open up these so that we can see. And just double-click at the top, and there you go. We've got everything showing there. Just put it down a tad. There we go. Now, frequency. You've got frequency in X. So how's it going to look one way? Okay, so you can actually take it to lines like that, which can be varied and moved. Or you can go in Y, so you can make it very thin or straight lines the other way. Okay, so these are very powerful effects. You can actually create these to look almost like rippling water. So if I keep going, I think out was a bit, you can see almost that's beginning to look like the surface of a lake. And if it were animating properly, you would actually get something that could look like a lake animation. And, you know, you can actually pull through the offset. Now, the offset is simply moving it sideways, okay? So I'm moving it one way or I'm moving it the other. That's great with things like fire or moving up and moving it down, but it's not actually a proper animation. All you're doing is moving it one way or the other. But progress, if I pull through progress, can you see progress is actually an animating item? So if I was to go to the beginning of my timeline, so I'm just going to select my timeline hit home at the beginning now, and I was to take progress and I was to click the little clock for progress, I've got all my lanes and my channels at the bottom. I'm just going to move this up a tad so we can see them all. There you go, I've got my lanes and my curves here. Okay, so I'm at the beginning of my event. Click the stopwatch. I'm going to go to the end of the event. That's the end of the event. And I'm going to take this from 0 all the way through to 10. Okay, so you can see animation has taken place. We can see the animation is here. So let's just click play and see if we can see it. And there you go. We've got some kind of look to animation. Now, the playback's not brilliant, so I would need to actually render this out to see it properly. But you can see we've got something that kind of looks a little bit like water moving. And that's done through this noise. Now, you can also, at the same time as I say, you can have offsets. So it can be moving one way or it can be moving the other. You can play with the colors. So if we wanted to make it more sea-like, this is where having a reference image makes all the difference in the world. I don't have a reference image. But if you had the uh, reference image nearby, you could take your color picker. You can add the color picker to select the water colors, and you can create something that looks like water. Amazing, really simple to do. The, the, the other parameters here are noise parameters. The noise parameters here are really to do with how thick these lines are. So if I was to pull down the maximum, pull that down a bit, you can see that it gets thin one way, which is almost cartoon-like. And if I was to do it the other, you see it gets thin in the other way. Okay, so it's really just to do with these lines. And you can actually play with the bias. Is it going to go one way or is it going to go the other? Okay, so you can bias it towards one color or the other. 
and the amplitude you can play with how it's going to look so these are just sort of how these lines actually appear but i'm going to leave them at the the standard settings now one of the other things that people often ask about is i'm just going to get rid of that event in fact let me just zoom out a bit and i'll add another event in is fire now we've got one here that says lava and so if i take lava here and drop it onto my timeline create a lava event it's doing nothing okay it's just sitting there maybe the colors are good maybe the colors aren't you can play with the colors you can have a play with those and get them to the appropriate colors for me i'd be going for something a lot darker i think so i'd be going for something uh, possibly even black to get a more sort of lava-ish look okay yeah probably something yeah maybe something like that uh, make it black um, and also i wouldn't be going for this red here and probably make it a little bit more orange fire yeah that's perhaps a little bit more like it okay now the way that you would animate that going to get a frequency and offset is you would animate progress again so if we just let the timeline open square bracket and i was to click the stopwatch for again progress and then go to the end of my event so close square bracket and i was to take progress right up again you can see when i play that through so if i just go back to the beginning of the event again and hit spacebar to play now ah, i haven't actually got my animation sorted out let me just take that down you need to do the end instantly. I did it on by going to the end of my item and I've not got it linked to the cursor. So I, I do need to pull the cursor across to here when the cursor's across to here. Then, of course, I can change my offset, my progress, pull my progress up. Now I've actually got animation. So should have done that first time. So now when I play that through, how does that look? Well, it's not really fire, is it? It's kind of glowing, the sort of thing you get from those fake fires. What you actually need to then animate is the offset. And we want it to offset up and down. So if I take it down at the beginning of the event, so make sure I'm at the beginning of the event, and I click the clock for offset, then I go to the end of the event, make sure you do it down here, by the way, not in the timeline as you saw I, I did before, and I was to pull it completely the other direction. So I've now got an animation curve there, and I play it. Let's have a little look. And that fire is now shooting up into the sky. Okay, maybe it's a bit exaggerated, but you get the idea. So that's how you can create a fiery look. How is this useful, you might say? Well, do bear in mind you've got composite modes. So if I go back over here and we've got the water over the castle, if I was to go in and do a composite mode and say do add, and I was to turn down the opacity value, I've got something that can move in the background. So when I hit my spacebar and I play, the background's actually moving and I'm creating a different kind of look. Now, it's often said that a little bit of movement goes a long way in video. And if you've got a still image and it's doing virtually nothing, I've taken that opacity right down to, let's say, 3%. There's a little bit of movement in the background. You'll notice that, or your clients will notice that. I wouldn't use this one. I would probably use something more cloudy. So, um, or cloud cover. Let's just have a little look at cloud cover and see what that one's like. So cloud cover, if we were to animate cloud cover, might give us exactly what we're looking for. So again, if we go to offset and we were to animate progress, make sure at the beginning, which we are, and then go to the end here, not in the timeline as you saw I did before. And then I was to do progress here, possibly not as much, just a little bit of progress. So I'm going to take it, say, to, let's say, three or thereabouts. Yeah, that'll do. So I've got a little bit of movement there. If I'm going to bring my castle underneath it, and I actually have a look at this one, take the opacity right down again, right down, and just play that through. You've just got a subtle bit of movement underneath, which is enough to draw your client's attention to what's going on. Now, you would have it even less than that. You really would have it very low just to get the appropriate effect. So that's uh, that's 6% there. No, I can't see it at 6%, so let's try it at uh, 13, uh, 18%. Yeah, there's enough of a difference there to be able to see some sort of movement underneath. Okay, so just using these noise textures and being able to play with them and modify them can create some fantastic results. And of course, you've got blood and plasma and you've got all the ones to start with. But do bear in mind that they're all animatable. They can all be blended so you can create your own fire or you can create your own water and you can play around with them and you can use blend modes to either go from the original source alpha or to something different depending on what you want to achieve. 
Well, I hope you found this tutorial useful and I hope you actually get to use noise textures and playing them with the compositing modes can be great fun. My name